Thanks. Greetings, YouTube. This is Longbow. Uh, you saw me in the past uh, make a couple slingshots out of molten metal, and uh, in each occasion I built a, a little forge on the fly, just out of plain old bricks, and that was hot enough to, to melt things, as hot as uh, aluminum, but I want to continue with more exotic metals. I want to try bronze and brass and uh, copper, so I'm going to have to build a more permanent, high-quality forge. Uh, previously I've gone with uh, propane and MPS gas the first time, the second time I went with forced air and charcoal. And this time I'm going to be going with uh, liquid fuel and forced air. So, uh, in order to do this, um, we're going to start off by building the burner assembly, which vaporizes the liquid and ignites it. Good kitty. So, I've been looking online and I found a number of burner designs, such as this one, which is uh, kind of interesting. It involves a, uh, a spike to get like a kind of a venturi or siphon effect, but I couldn't get this darn thing to work. So, I went and built my own uh, atomizer, and here it is for the most part. I call this the longbow atomizer, and here's how you build it. Uh, first off, we'll start with a, uh, a T. Um, all of these things are brass pipe fittings, and they're all, uh, one-eighth inch diameter, uh, radius, I'm sorry, unless otherwise specified. On this side of the T, there's going to be a nozzle. Let me turn on the light. And for the nozzle, we'll be using a square plug. On the other side of the T, we'll be using a uh, close uh, nipple. On the other side of the nipple, there'll be a, an elbow. There's another close nipple that goes here. Another here. And finally, we're going to be using uh, one of these things. This is a... Uh, inflation nozzle for a ball, like a basketball or a volleyball. Pretty straightforward. Just a very thin tube. It's got a little threaded connector at this point. And what we're going to do is stick that threaded connector into this pipe nipple. But the diameter at the end here is just a little bit too small for that uh, thread to fit inside. So what needs to be done is drill it out. This uh, particular drill bit, this is kind of a specialized bit, it's 19 sixty-fourths. I'm just going to stick it in the end and pretend to drill it out. I've already actually drilled this out, so it's the proper diameter now. As you can see that side has a very thin rim right there. The opposite side quite a bit thicker, probably twice as thick. So, into that thinner side, we're going to take our ball inflation nozzle and just stick it in. Just like so. And now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder that edge. We'll put flux on uh, this uh, stainless steel part here. Just kind of on the corner of the thread. So it's got a nice a little bit of flux on there. And we'll now insert that into our modified nipple. Now it's ready to be soldered. Yeah, I now have my nipple nozzle assembly uh, it clamped in the vise here, and now I'm just going to braise it together. doing this, always try to apply heat to the larger of the two pieces, and it should propagate through to the smaller one. There, that's done.
Sorry, this is kind of an afterthought. I had to make one tiny modification to this piece. Uh, if you, you may have noticed earlier on in the video, there's a tiny hole right at the tip of the nozzle and the side. And if you don't seal that up, uh, this device will not work. It'll end up bubbling up into the fuel instead of creating a venturi effect and drawing the fuel in. So the way I sealed the hole was I forced a very small drill bit in there until it pushed the metal back up on the inside. Then I just put a tiny little dab of flux on there and heated it up, soldered the hole sealed, and now it's a perfect, perfectly solid tube from one end to the other instead of having a little hole in the side. And now we're ready for the next part that needs to be modified. This is actually the last one. So what we've got to do is drill a hole in the center of this square plug. So you can see on the inside there it's countersunk, so it'll be easy to get the, uh, the hole centered. The size of the hole I want is yay big. It's got to be the exact same size as this nozzle here. I'm using uh, precision drill bits, so you probably don't have this, but just use whatever's closest. Alrighty, this thing is now ready to be assembled. You can see the two pieces we've modified recently. Here's the, uh, the plug with the hole in the end. I've also taken the liberty of shaving down the top of the plug so that it's a little bit shorter in this dimension. And here's the modified pipe nipple slash uh, ball valve, uh, ball nozzle assembly. The nozzle soldered into the nipple. Now, uh, we'll assemble this uh, by constructing our fuel line first. So we have our fancy modified piece here. That goes into the elbow like this. Now in the final assembly I'll be using this uh, Teflon tape to uh, seal all the threads, but this is just for demonstration purposes. So that's uh, one segment of our fuel line put together, and here's the second. We've got a close nipple here, and another close nipple here. So there's our fuel line. Next, this uh, tight little tube here goes inside the T, like so. Get in there. Ooh. Maybe it goes the other way. One of these is a little easier than the other. There we go. So now you can see the little tip of the valve, or nozzle, I should say, uh, protruding from the end of the T. And that's where we take our little nozzle plug that we made and simply stick it on. What that is going to do is create a Venturi effect right in the tip of the nozzle here. You might not be able to see, but just beyond the edge of the hole on the edge here is the inside of that thinner uh, ball nozzle. And what that's going to do is create a, a, there will be an incredible amount of air th rushing past the end of that nozzle, and it will create a negative pressure drawing oil in through the fuel line. Now just to finalize this, we put another close nipple on top of here. And then a hub. It's one eighth uh, radius on that end, quarter inch radius on that end. That goes on there. Now we take a quick connect adapter that will go to my air compressor. On there. There's the completed air line. And for to complete the oil line, I'll take this little uh, 1 8 inch radius coupler and finalize it with this uh, 1 8 one eighth of an inch needle valve. So we have oil coming in here. I can regulate it with the valve. We've got air coming coming in here. I can regulate that with the compressor. Oil rushes down here, through that very thin tube. A venturi effect happens here when the air <laughs> rushes past it and draws oil in through the fuel line. 
This, ladies and gentlemen, is the Longbow Atomizer. Now to test it out. Well, sorry if this uh, bit is a little bit shaky, guys, but as you can see, my workshop is a disaster area at the moment, and I can't really fit uh, my tripod in here. So, I'm holding this manually. As you can see, I got a little bit of pressure in the tank here. 50 PSI, just under 50 PSI. And here's the Longbow Atomizer. Let's turn on the light. And we'll turn on this light. Alright, so you can see the airline going into the first segment. And we've got uh, the fuel line here. And this will whoop, get inserted into this bottle of blue liquid here. Yeah, that's just water. So, time to crank this puppy up and see if it works. We'll start with a low pressure, maybe about uh, 5 psi or so. Got some gas escaping here. Not a great deal. So we'll try opening up our valve and see what happens. It's starting to draw water. We'll turn up a bit. That should give us some more venturi goodness. So now we're about 10 psi. Nice jet going on, so we'll open up the valve. Oh! Woohoo! Success! Nice fine jet of mist. Yeah! That's gonna work just fine. So, now what we gotta do is mount this in the burn tube, and then try uh, spraying some kerosene. <laughs> so, here is the finished product. Once again, got the uh, fuel valve, the air valve, and the pipe. The entire thing is now housed in. So basically, fire is going to be coming out about at this end. I'm assuming shooting out to about here. And if need be, I can insert a, a vacuum nozzle or my hot air gun in this end to provide additional air. In theory, uh, you could not only use air to uh, atomize this kerosene that will be going in here, you could also hook a propane up to this, and that should atomize it just as well. But with propane, it won't burn on its own. You'll definitely need additional air. So, let's see how this works. <laughs> Okay, so here's my setup. Got the burn tube there, very precariously perched in its cradle. And we've got our fuel up here. I've swapped out the blue water. And we're gonna try burning some kerosene now. So, let's see what happens. I'll open up the valve and we get some fire. a little work, but uh, you can see there's some kerosene dripping out the bottom. But uh, yeah, I think I'm definitely making progress with this one. But it does need some work. Maybe I need to use higher pressure. Maybe I need to tweak my nozzle a little bit. We'll see. anyway so what I got to do is I got to dig a little bit of a hole in the backyard here and pour the foundation for my foundry forge uh, but as you can see it's still winter so I guess we're gonna have to wait for the uh, the building of the forge guys tune in next time for the actual building of the forge body
And the video after that will be melting some copper.